Whatever you're into, you can be yourself in New York. New York makes you happy and it drives you crazy at the same time. Seeing the skyline, smelling the trash, seeing the piss-soaked streets of New York make me feel like I can do anything. It's constantly changing, constantly progressing, constantly growing. And together with, with London, the two greatest cities in the world. Everybody wants to be a part of this city. New York and London have history. These two cities are leading the world in a new wave of tech startups. But now British startups are making it over here. And we're here to find out what it takes to make it big in the Big Apple. New York's tech scene is five years ahead of London's, and at its heart is General Assembly, a familiar face on our startup scene back home. Nice hey, to meet you. How's great it to going? Meet you. Great. Good. Welcome to GA. Thank you. But what we have here in New York is tons of industry. We're an incredible magnet for talented people. Um, really, what we're seeing is the transformation of every industry into an industry that needs to embrace enabling technologies in order to continue to grow and continue to be relevant in the 21st century. I know firsthand what it's like to be in Silicon Valley. I know what it's like to build a company there. And I can personally attest to this environment being the best place in America to build a business. Your ability to network, your ability to take meetings, your ability to interface with all of the greatest industries of the world is no greater anywhere in the world than it is right here. Um, you can go 20 blocks north and then you're in advertising central of the world. You can go 20 blocks south and you're in finance center of the world. You go five blocks north you're in the fashion center of the world. There's not too many other cities that can claim those bona fides. You may recognize Damien from the first series of the elevator pitch, but since then he's tripled the number of employees. He's got offices in London, New York, and in Singapore. We caught up with Damien to find out more about his move to New York City. As an English guy coming here, people generally want to, to talk to you and to hear your story, and you shouldn't be afraid of telling that. The expectation here in New York is that things just happen faster. So whether that's waiting in line for a coffee or waiting to receive a term sheet, there is more of a hustle that happens here in New York than there is in London. And how important is your US operation going to be to Glow as a whole? Just being on the radar of any strategic buyers, any uh, growth funds, to have a solid business in the US is, is absolutely critical. As a tech company, if you're able to work with 50% of the internet users in the UK versus 50% in the US, you're looking at a 10x difference. How's the coffee? <laughs> so the coffee... It can be great, but it can be really awful. The standard coffee here is pretty bad. You've got to really hunt out the good spots. So Trevor, who we're meeting for lunch, uh, is a very good friend of mine. He helped me understand what it means to live in Manhattan and where to live. New York, it's, it's very unique in terms of the areas that, that exist. They're very, very different. And despite the fact they may be half a mile apart, they actually have very, very different looks and different feels. Deciding where you want to live is probably the hardest decision that you'll make when you when you come to New York. People tend to congregate where we are, which is around West Village. It's got bars and restaurants, but it's just got really nice village feels. You can have a very nice lifestyle there, but it's actually pretty quiet and pretty nice. Hi, dog. So you're in love. So I, I so is the cannibal dog get two of those? That is amazing. New Yorkers are quite abrupt, but actually they're, they're really, really friendly once you get past that first facade of abruptness. You have an English accent. It's amazing the advantage you, you can have if you dial that up, particularly when you're trying to get restaurant bookings, which are <laughs> very hard to, to say, get. Being a Brit gets a restaurant booking easier. I think the, the person at the end of the phone probably takes you a lot more seriously than me. Next, we travelled uptown to meet Blipper, another British success story. Here's Lisa. Blipper is an app and uh, platform where you open it up on any mobile device and you hold it up to any product or print that's blippable and you see it come to life. A lot of people know it as augmented reality and we do that but a lot more. I do remember the days when it started in my apartment, in my living room. And then I remember one of our co-founders, Jess Butcher, coming here and we just go crash at cafes or hotel lobbies to do some work. Then we evolved into sharing space with an agency that then led us to going into a WeWork space. It was not only about the spaces, there's a community of other great entrepreneurs um, and other startups. So there's a lot of good knowledge sharing and then from there, we then moved into our own space. And you've had some help from the UKTI? UKTI have been very instrumental in helping us 
opened new doors, introducing us to a community of other entrepreneurs, introducing us to other businesses. So we were able to see, you know, real time how quickly these guys were growing, how they were developing relationships with a whole bunch of companies here in the U.S. and, and across the globe. We've supported them at a number of, of events. We have used their uh, amazing product, and it's just been phenomenal to see to see their success in action. And we have two missions in life, as I say: promoting British companies to do more business here in the U.S. and helping U.S. companies do exactly the same in the U.K. We provide a handheld service to to support their their growth connecting them to the right people, inviting them to all the right events, making sure that they are plugged into the ecosystem straight away. They understand some of the pitfalls and challenges companies face and we're there to provide support. Next it was time to find out how New Yorkers spend their evenings. We caught up with Toby. Now he may not sound it, but he's actually an Englishman in New York and he's worked for some of the biggest tech startups in the city. And walk me through like, I don't know, a typical Thursday, Friday night, you've just finished work at Pager, uh, how do you end up here? Typically, probably frustrated after a long week migrating here at, at 6 o'clock with a couple of colleagues and just starting the night here before going somewhere more serious and a little more lively. What would be your perfect day in New York? The food is amazing, there are great drinks you can have, you can meet so many interesting people from all walks of life. So I would just say a day spent eating, drinking, talking to new people that I've never met before. I mean, there's a huge work hard, play hard culture here. So the people you work with, especially in startups, I think become your friends. And going out and drinking is a, like as terrible as it sounds, it's an important part of the culture. You bond in a different way and um, build relationships that, that, to be honest, I think help in the workplace. On your first trip to New York, what is your favorite thing about it so far? London is like a series of villages that are attached to each other by accident, mm -hmm. whereas New York feels like more of a continuous city. How the hell does startup land in New York work? Like, where are our people? Where are our people? So traditionally, Silicon Alley was Fifth Avenue, sort of below 23rd Street, running down to Houston. Now we've got a ton of startups concentrated here in Soho, not too far. We've got a bunch in the Flatiron District. We've got a bunch in Brooklyn, more and more. So you've got Etsy and Dumbo in Brooklyn. ZocDoc is right around the corner from where we are now, and Soho is this Foursquare. And now every major Silicon Valley startup has also opened offices here. So we've got the Facebooks, the Twitters, the Googles of the world, all based in New York. I love the excitement, the density, and the pure sort of quantity of people that you have to see on a daily basis. It keeps you humble, it keeps you motivated. No matter what industry you're in, no matter what you're doing, people here are super intense about it and want to do big things. If you're into you know, ping pong, there's your know, ping pong clubs. If you're into book clubs, there'll be every single genre of a book club it'll exist. Uh, if you're into dining naked, there's groups of people that go and dine naked and it's not a sexual thing. Literally whatever you're into, you can be yourself in New York. It's a city that will always have a very special place in my heart because our daughter Lucy was born here in, uh, in New York. So, you know, there she is, uh, our daughter with an American passport and she will be a New Yorker for life, which means that we will be too. If you're interested in finding out more about moving over to New York, check out our videos from our partners JLL and Freed Frank to find out more about making it big in the Big Apple.